In this video, we show how to configure Fernhill SCADA to work with a PLC that uses Modbus TCP. We start by connecting the configuration tool to a Fernhill SCADA server. In this case, we click the local host entry to connect to the SCADA server running on the local computer. Then we create a work folder by right clicking the root folder and select add new folder, then enter Modbus TCP and then press return. When setting up communication with a device, the first step is to create a tag for the communication channel. To do this for Modbus TCP, we right click our work folder, select add new tag, followed by Modbus, followed by Modbus TCP IP channel. We shorten the name to channel and then press return. Then in the properties window, we click the host property and we enter the IP address of the target device. In our case, this is 192.168.1.16. We can check the tag status window to confirm that the communication channel is online. The next step is to create a tag for the PLC device. To do this for Modbus TCP, we right click our work folder, select add new tag, followed by Modbus, followed by Modbus device. Shorten the tag name to PLC and then press return. You might need to configure the unit property of the PLC device tag. Whether you need to depends on the type of Modbus TCP device you're using. For example, some Modbus TCP devices ignore the unit number. Other Modbus TCP devices require a specific value. You should check the documentation and configuration of the device you're using. If the device requires a specific unit number, you should enter that here. The device we're using today ignores the unit number, so we can keep the default value of 1. You might also need to configure the device features to match the capabilities of the device you're using. These properties tell Fernhill SCADA which Modbus commands are supported by the device and the word order used to send double word or long word values. The default options match the most common Modbus TCP devices, which includes the device I'm using today. The final part of the setup of the PLC device tag is to set the channel property. To do this, Click the Browse button next to the channel property of the PLC device tag. Select the channel we created in an earlier step and click OK. We can check the tag status window to confirm the PLC is now online. If we right click the communication channel tag and select view data log, we can see a live view of the communication with the PLC. With only the PLC tag configured, the activity visible in the log will be limited to an occasional communication check request. By default, this happens every 15 seconds. For now, we'll close the communication log. To configure a digital data point for the PLC, we do the following steps. We right click on our work folder and select Add New Tag, followed by Core, followed by IO Digital Tag. We shorten the tag name to Output Coil and press Return. Then in the Properties window, we click the Browse button of the IO Data Source and select the PLC tag we created in the previous step. And then in the IO Item Name property, we select Output Coil 513, which is the first digital in our device. Click OK. Again we check the tag status window to confirm the quality of the digital tag is good. Fernhill SCADA has a secure by default policy, so write operations to real hardware have to be explicitly enabled. To do this, Make sure the tag you want to change is selected in the tag window. Then in the properties window, set 
allow controls to true. Now when we right click on the IO data point tag in the tag window we get an option to write a value. We can use this option to send a write request to the PLC. When we click OK Fernhill SCADA will send a write coil command to the Modbus device. In the tag status window we can see the tag has changed state to reflect the new state of the Modbus coil. Creating an analog data point tag is similar to creating a digital data point tag. We start by clicking our working folder, then selecting add new tag, followed by core, followed by IO analog tag. For this example we will keep the default generated name. We move to the properties window and scroll down. We click the browse button next to the IO data source and select the PLC we created in a previous step and we click the browse button next to the IO item name field and configure input register 1. We can then check the tag status window to confirm the quality of the tag is good. Input register 1 on the Mudbus device we are using is a 10 volt analog input where 0 volts is reported as register value 0 and 10 volts is reported as register value 32,767. If we apply 5 volts to the input, the value displayed in the tag status window does not reflect the input value. We need to change the analog tag configuration to correctly report the input voltage. To do this, we set the max scale to 10. In the units field we enter volts. For the IO item type field we keep the value of 16-bit unsigned which interprets the word register as a 16-bit unsigned quantity. We change raw scale conversion to linear interpolation and we set the raw scale max to 32,767. And after we do this, we find that the value now shown in the tag status window more accurately reflects the input voltage. That concludes this video showing how to set up Fernhill SCADA to communicate with Modbus TCP devices. If you would like to find out more, check out the Modbus driver topic in the online help.